Okay, so I totally got cut off, y'all. I'm sorry. I apologize. But now I'm home, and we're going to try this again. <laughs> okay? We're going to try it again. We're going to try it again. All right, so we're going to try this again. I just got home, and we're going to do this again, okay? So here's the crazy thing about this. Now that I'm home, I actually have decided, this is me, okay? This is my crazy self. So I'm on my way home. You know, my phone, like, I don't know. I'm going to get the iPhone 14 because this one is the 12. And every time I go live or something like that on here, it will say got too hot, temperature too high or some crap like that. And then it cuts off. So I apologize about that. So for those of you who are just joining me, post a one below if it's your first through third time catching me live. Post a two below if you're an oldie but goodie. And make sure you say hi. Tell me where you're from. And um, today we're going to talk about the intimidation factors. If you go back and watch the one that got cut off, I'm telling you about the intimidation factors and the different things that school districts do. I'm going to bring you guys with me because I just got coffee. And... Um, so I had an appointment. I worked all day. And, you know, have you guys ever been so hungry like you could eat your whole house? That's how I feel. Okay. So bottom line, um, this district emailed me. And Erin, um, she was messaging me on the way here. And I was telling her, I was like, oh, my gosh, do you remember your email that I got from your school district where, you know, the director of special education wrote a formal letter and, you know, to intimidate you know, and I obviously wrote back and shut it down really quick. <laughs> and, you know, it was one of those things where, you know, I put a lot of thought into it. I have a, um, I don't know, a process that I have just gotten really good at. And when I respond, I'm very, very, sorry about my dog's ill. Um, I'm very transparent in what has transpired. So it's kind of like if you want to mess with me, all right, and you want to throw the dog the bone, all right, is this how that says? Is that how it said? Don't even, my husband laughs at me when it comes to analogies, so just don't get it started. So anyway, it's kind of like you want to play with me, you better be ready to play with me, okay? So, and that's only when it comes to the IEPs, y'all. I'm not like this outside of IEPs. <laughs> um, so... I do not do well with that. All right. Call it PTSD, whatever it is you want to call it. But I refuse to deal with that anymore. So you all can thank me because of what I went through with Skylar. I'm not going to let that happen with you. Okay. Because I have no tolerance for it anymore. All right. Um, you always know an advocate who's a mother who has been through it like the trenches and knows knows how this is all navigated, you know? And you know where they haven't been through as much, possibly. Um, sorry, that's my stove. Um, so this parent and I, you know, I actually messaged her and talked to her on my way back when my phone <laughs> cut out. And I said, hey, I'm going to go live about your, your letter. Because she actually wrote me. I'm going to show you what she wrote. <clears throat> she wrote me because she and I signed this letter. I'm going to read it to you. If that's okay, if you guys are willing, I would love to read the district's letter that they sent to the mom. And then and then I'm hopping off here. <laughs> and then I'm going to read you what I, I wrote. Okay? And I want you to be open to... Whatever it is that you have to say, I encourage um, that healthy dialogue. Um, and even if you disagree, it's fine. I just don't want nastiness. That's all. Don't throw a dog a bone if you're afraid to get. <laughs> okay, there you go. <laughs> um, you know me, Erin. I try, but it's, you know. Um, so this is what she just wrote me. All right. Because um, I had asked her. And um, oh my God, Erin just sent me like her video. <laughs> so, um, so this is what this parent um, just wrote me because she had to sign it to the letter that I'm going to read you. All right. So her district wrote a letter that was just full of malarkey and that you want me to play it. 
Um, oh my God. I don't, I haven't even, I haven't even read it, heard it yet, Aaron. I mean, what if I'm embarrassing myself? What does it say? <laughs> I'll play it. I'll play it. Whatever. You know, I have everything recorded. Why not? Right. Um, so I responded back and I'm thorough. It took me three days to write it. It's seven pages. I'm very, very, very thorough. If you get, you're going to send me a formal letter and you're going to talk shit about a family, about a child that you have not supported, you better prepare yourself and brace, okay? Because I have no tolerance for that, all right? Especially when we are talking about a child who is five years behind in reading and math. I'm sorry, but I have no tolerance for that. It is unacceptable. And this is a child that can learn. She can talk. She has fluent sentences. She does not have speech. She can learn. Okay. Now, does she have behavior issues? Yes. And, and they have increased. All right. So I'm going to give you a little bit of background while I get some creamer for my coffee. Okay. This is a child. She is in high school. All right. She just started high school and she is five years behind in reading and in math. <clears throat> she has been sent from a, she's actually in my state, a Virginia school district to a, it's not so much a private school, but it is a private school. It's, I'm going to tell you the name. It's the center for autism. And, um, she, uh, is not doing well. Okay. At first she did okay, but you know, the school district played with mom for a long time. And so that's why they switched her schools. And, you know, they're obviously paying for that school. <laughs> I can say that because it's not my settlement, right? Um, and then what happened is she went to this new school and then it wasn't, <laughs> has shown to not be a great fit. All right. And so what has happened is mom contacts me about a year ago and not yet a year ago almost and you know we talked for quite some time and you know she was iffy because she had had other advocates in the past and um she was like i just can't do this anymore and um you know my daughter's not learning and you know it reminded me so much of skylar because skylar's 17 now and um that whole I, she's learning, she's learning, and then the crap that comes out of their mouth to really, truly make us believe, and that's what bugs me, is they will truly make you believe that your child's learning, and they're not, and, you know, I used to fall for it all the time, and it's hard to give examples of exactly what they say, but, you know, they convince you that your child is learning, that this is how it's supposed to be. They're reading beautifully, but really they're talking about fluency. They're not talking about comprehension. Um, it's just all these things that they do that, you know, when they, when everything comes to a head and, and you're like, oh my God, you know, I've been lied to all this time, or maybe you don't want to say lie. You want to say, you know, they haven't been honest with me or whatever, you know, it, it's a real disappointment, isn't it? It's like kind of like a punch in the gut. I remember <clears throat> I felt that way and um, it was not a good feeling at all, um, but the child cannot do it at home. What do you mean? Um, so here, this is what mom said to me just a few minutes ago, because she had to sign the letter. I signed the letter. She signed the letter. And um, she goes, um, thank you for advocating for, um, and I'm just going to make up a name, Erin. Um, I said, you're welcome. And she said, that letter gave me some peace of mind. Everything you said was true and they know it. Yes, Erin is five years behind. So um, I'm going to read the letter to you from the school district. Let me get my dog some water. Um, and then what I'm going to do is I'm going to read my letter to you so that you can maybe gain some knowledge, if you will, if, if this is not something that you're proficient in. Um, I gave Jake and Rocco some water. Um, and, and hopefully maybe it can give you some and shed some light on how to take a deep breath and respond. It took me three days to write 
my portion and um, hopefully you enjoy it. And hopefully you can maybe not enjoy theirs, but enjoy mine. <laughs> um, but the thing is, what I really want you to get from it is that just because they send, you know, a letter on letterhead, it does not mean anything, okay? Especially when you know they've done wrong. That's their way of thinking, as long as you are one step ahead, that they have got something on you, that that's going to be their proof because they put it on their formal paper, all right? And that's not the case, all right? It's not the case, all right? So you got to look at it like this is if you're going to say it, it's going to come out of your mouth. And if it's going to be put on paper, on your formal paper, you better know what you're talking about. Now, listen to what I just said. You better know what you're talking about. Now, listen to my response and remember what I just said. Now, I'm going to read that letter, the letter from the director first. And then I'm going to give some explanation and then read mine. All right. So feel free to share. Feel free to invite people, whatever it is that you want to do. So I'm going to start off with the district's director of special education's letter first. Okay. <clears throat> Mr. and Mrs. Let's just say Aaron. <laughs> um, this letter is to address information. My office. Now, keywords here. This is what I pay attention to. So I'm going to teach you as I go. Okay. Okay. This is to address, this is from the director, all right? This is to address information my office has received. That was keywords right there for me. All right, I'm gonna tell you in a minute. Regarding meetings held on your behalf um, and behalf of your daughter, here's another keyword, as well as the abusive conduct by you and Miss Woods, okay, towards school staff. Not a mention about them. Nothing. It is my understanding that me, Miss Woods, who is invited by you to attend all meetings regarding your daughter, continues to demonstrate behaviors that are in violation of school board policies. Okay. I don't give a shit. And I'll tell you why. School board policies don't supersede or trump idea. Idea states that a parent and a school district can invite whomever they want. It doesn't say that they can invite whoever they want based on school board policies. It says they can invite whomever they want. And as long as they're knowledgeable in the IEP process, they can invite whoever they want and they're part of the IEP team. Therefore, the school cannot dictate who is there and not there. Now, mind you, if somebody cussed them out and was attacking them personally or any of those things, okay, then we need to have a conversation because there's some rudeness going on and we need to chit chat about it. But to not expect IEPs to get a bit stressful, sometimes hostile, and even um, stressful <laughs> in many different ways, emotional and more, you're out of your damn mind. Okay. So people have to look at the IEP process very realistically. And if somebody's advocating and on their end, they don't like what I have to say, um, then they're going to, they use words like this. What did she say? She said abusive contact. She doesn't explain it, but she just uses that word. All right. Um, so then she goes on to say, um, additionally, despite um, review of our guidelines and decorum in meetings, verbal redirection and attempts to work collaboratively with you and Miss Woods, interactions have been counterproductive to our overall goal as a school district working to address your daughter's educational needs. Should such behaviors continue or intensify, Miss Woods and you may be barred from future IEP meetings. The team has requested mediation and asked for an IEP facilitator to be considered to help both parties through the process. Bullshit. Um, you have disagreed with this option. We are ready and willing to be able to work with you in the IEP scheduled. As you are aware, IEP meetings are held at a mutual agreeable time. She goes into 
other stuff. And then she says, in an effort to work more collaboratively and effectively with you to adequately address the needs of your daughter, know that you are more than welcome to have the right to have somebody attend the meetings with you um, to help you navigate the process. However, it is not acceptable for a you or anyone in the meeting to advocate in a confrontational manner or demean staff. Okay. All right. So that's their letter. Now, I'll be one 5,000% transparent with you. One, well, here, well, here's the thing. Is she, do you see how she states all these things? Well, she doesn't really state all these things. All she states is abusive conduct. And then she states that there's board policies. And then she states um, that they're trying to work collaboratively. And then she states that um, they're willing to work with us at the next meeting. All right. So we got a bunch of different things. All right. Well, number one, if you're going to make a statement like abusive conduct, what was done? Wouldn't you, if you had some stuff on that, because that's such a big word, wouldn't you, if it were me, I would say A, B, C, D, or bullet point one, bullet point two, bullet point three, bullet point four. This is what you've been doing, right? Back up what you got to say. Don't just put things on paper and think that because they're big words that they're going to actually mean something. All right. And this is what school districts do. And parents freak the hell out. All right. So you're hearing, oh, you know, this, that and the other. Oh, they're going to remove your advocate. Oh, they're going to this. This is threats. OK, they can't do that. It would be a violation of the parent and students rights. It would be a removal of the parent of an IEP meeting. It would be removal of an advocate from an IEP meeting. There's so many violations in it. It would make their head spin. All right. And then they'd have to back it up and they can't even back it up on paper. All right. So here's my response. You ready for this? All right, you got to listen. All right, if you want to learn from this, all right, because I put a lot of thought into this stuff. <laughs> so what you're not able to say anything during the meeting. I know, right? I can't, I can't talk. No, what it is, is in the last meeting, I said to that, I pissed him off. So, well, I always piss him off. But like, I pissed him off because I said to the private school, I said, you all, you all need training. And she said, no, we don't, you know, with her little facial shit. And um, I turned to the, because it wasn't, it's not the director that's been at the meetings, it's the one right under her, but they don't call her the assistant director. Um, and I said to her, I said, you need to um, put together a PWN. I am requesting that you all, because you are paying them to train them on idea, because they don't know it. All right. I understand she's got her PhD, she's got all this education, but for some reason it's not showing itself or coming to light here. So we need to educate her on idea because she is failing to understand what it is. And you yourself, this I'm talking to the assistant director or whatever, um, admitted that, you know, all these people that she put on the meeting notice that aren't here today, well, you know, they have to be here. That's a violation. You know this. And she said, yeah, it is. And um, the other lady, you know, didn't like that very much. So they're pissed off that I called them out on 50 million things in this last meeting. So what are they doing? Lashing back out. Does it intimidate me? Hell no. Not, not even the slightest little bit. All right. So don't react to their words. All right. She wants to use abusive conduct, but you're going to use abusive conduct. I got the recordings. I, I believe so do you. I mean, wouldn't you think that you could tell me what those are? What, what's the abusive conduct? You mean on your all's end? Because if it's if you're going to use that word, it would be towards y'all. That's how it does that towards you all. <laughs> Can't talk. Towards them. All right. Here's my response. You ready? <clears throat> all right. This is a response to, I'm going to tell you her name, Miss Judge, um, Director of Special Education's email dated, for, <laughs> she already screwed up, so I already corrected her, listen to this, um, email dated September 28, 2022, sent on September 27, 2022. They're going to love that. Um, Miss Judge, first and foremost, your office receiving information on behalf of Aaron, <laughs> um, IEP meetings and your abusive conduct occurring is a blatant lie. In the future, if you choose to not stay in the loop, ignore the parent's request for your support and attendance, then make sure when you make a statement or attempt in posting the blame on others, because never is the school district responsible. And then I put in parentheses being sarcastic. Then make sure that you have your facts straight. 
I continue and I say the reference of information on abusive conduct is the district's very common occurrence of twisting things to attempt at sounding good, making a point, or should I say, in this case, your attempt at making false accusations and pointing a finger at Ms. Peters and myself. If you cannot back down advocating for us, um, if you are calling, oh, I said it, if you are calling, backing, um, not backing down, advocating for a student who at your school district has failed over and over um, and continues to fail, raising voices but not yelling, frustration and challenge of um, the crap you feed us that is not in the student's interest, then so be it. So basically I'm saying if abusive conduct is advocating for a child, then call it whatever you want, okay? <clears throat> so I said, call it as you choose, but I will be clear on the specific actions and inactions produced. Along with the numerous actions and inactions of the school district, its staff, and the Center for Autism, um, specifically, and I named the Director of Education for the Autism Center. I continued and I said, the recording of her actions in an IEP meeting will soon be public. Yep, we're taking it to the paper. So who is being abusive here? This is about a student, the student's education and their educational needs. And the only human being being abusive is the school district, the Center for Autism, um, who are not serving the student. And this would be considered abusive conduct to the student. I will address this with you very clearly below, and I expect you to be professional and appropriate in your communications and actions moving forward. You are expected to conduct yourself in this manner. The parent and I are not. However, neither of us has cussed or attacked anyone personally inside or outside the educational setting or in an IEP meeting. The parent has used some language out of frustration via email. However, this is not referenced. So she didn't reference it in her email. All right, Ms. Judge, you have been asked to be present in IEP meetings on multiple occasions and asked for your support when things have gotten rough. The purposeful actions in going out of your way to ignore a parent, your lack of care and support of a parent of a special child of a special needs child under your school district's egregious callous um, and under your school district is egregious, callous, and inappropriate. If you want to comment and make statements, base them on facts pertaining to the student, the student's education, the IEP, or the IEP process. Your receiving of information, meaning as we both know, was a report to you by your staff. You now want to comment and have something to say when all this time you have ignored the situation. I don't think so. I continued and I said, at this point, if you want to have a voice, a meaningful one, to the parent, then show that you actually care versus threaten to remove her advocate for from the IEP meetings, which you in fact know is a federal violation and you cannot do. Bring yourself to the IEP meetings and show that you care about this student. Save your opinions based on receiving information. I continue and I say, you want to talk about inappropriate conduct? Let's do that. A, <laughs> it is clear from this letter you have not listened to the recordings. I can give you all kinds of recordings if you like. However, I believe you, you all have the recordings. B, staff have been completely inappropriate, interp um, interpreted, caught in blatant lies, contradicting themselves, not having appropriate staff members present in the IEP meetings on numerous occasions. You would think they'd have learned by now. However, they do not conduct themselves appropriately, especially when we have a student who has made suicidal threats, failed to provide the appropriate documentation on numerous um, occasions. They, so basically the student has made, um, had suicidal thoughts and things like that. You know, there's things going on with mom and then there is um, her grandmother just passed away. And so um, they failed to do what's called the proper paperwork, you know, in order to, um, properly handle a situation like that because we always have to take it seriously. And so there has to be documentation and there has to be um, a meeting with the um, psychologist or counselor. And there's just different things that have to go on. And none of that has gone home. None of it has, you know, been put in writing other than one time. And there's been numerous times that this has happened. And so they've failed to, to carry themselves in the appropriate way um, and do the proper things that go with, you know, a um, child who says things like that. 
Now, <clears throat> mom and I believe, you know, I'm 100% not qualified to even ever, you know, make a um, statement in regards to that. But mom and I, knowing the child very well, obviously, um, believe it's a, um, a, a behavior that's more attention seeking. Um, and because we know that or she knows that if she makes a comment like that, then she gets to leave the classroom and not do her work. Um, but, you know, mom and I would never say that we're 100 percent on that, obviously, um, and still want the school district to handle things appropriately um, as they should. OK, so that's what I mean there. I said staff have completely um, been completely in inappropriate, interrupted, caught in blatant lies, contradicting themselves, not having appropriate staff members present at IEP meetings, et cetera, et cetera. So I go on and I say um, have not conducted themselves appropriately in the suicide threats, failed to provide the appropriate documentation on numerous occasions, and violated multiple state and federal laws to the point where educational harm and neglect has occurred along with a clear intention of deliberate indifference. So for those of you who don't know what deliberate indifference is, is deliberate indifference is if you have been told, if you know and are aware of something, but you still intentionally do it and it causes harm, okay? So it's, it's a, I guess it's used more in legal type things, if you will, but it's it's a very um, profound word that is and can be used in the educational setting because if you deliberately are doing something knowing that it's not right, then that is deliberate indifference, especially if it's harming a child educationally, okay? And it could be harming a child physically. It could be, you know, any of those things. I move on to say, tell your staff and the Center for Autism that the district pays to not be confrontational, for example, when the director, after providing a draft IEP, got frustrated in an IEP meeting. This this was beautiful. Oh, my God. Okay, I got this on recording, and this is what we're actually giving to the paper. Um, she provided the draft to us in advance. Um, actually, not in advance. We got them on that. And then she proceeded to read. So I'm going to finish reading this to you. After providing the draft, she got frustrated in an IEP meeting in the spring of 2022, where she literally read the IEP and ignored the parent and the advocate trying to talk. So she literally just started reading just really fast and would not listen to mom or me, myself. Like we just stopped talking and just let her do it. And I was like, I messaged mom. I said, let's just get this on recording. Let her keep going. Let her bury herself. Um, there was no collaboration and she intentionally was reading the IEP to get through it and be done. And then literally when she was done, she said, okay, we're finalizing this. Which she cannot do, but it was beautiful to catch on recording, you know, um, totally not in the interest of the student. Now we've gotten past all that, but the point is, is that they've carried themselves in this way this whole time. All right. Um, but does the director who's never been in a meeting ever say anything like that? No, she doesn't say any of that. She just uses a blanket statement with big words thinking it's going to scare us. Okay. So if she's watching here, it didn't scare us. Bring it on. Okay. So it was one of the most disrespectful acts a school staff member, let alone a director of school, along with the fact that it violated so many state and federal laws, including removing the parents' rights. She did not listen to anyone and miss blank, the other director, just sat there speechless, as did we after multiple occasions of an attempt in discussion and collaboration. Miss, the other lady who was speaking, deny this due to the recordings and her facial, cannot deny this due to her the f recordings and her facial expressions of shock, nor can we. It was blatant and intentional. It was disrespectful and egregious in nature, along with removing the advocate and parent from the IEP meeting and including them as equal team members. Do you need a copy of this? <laughs> I move on and I say, clearly you have been misinformed or told what they want to tell you, but do not go approaching a situation in the blind in the future, not addressing all issues and all and all involved, not being transparent, and then putting the blame of how things have transpired onto the advocate and parent. I said it goes both ways. 
I am not sure why I'm having to have to say this to someone who should be educated and experienced and understand how things can veer off to the side and things become adversary. IEPs are not known to be fun meetings. They are also not known to remove um, difficulty or difficult and uncomfortable feelings or be easy. Do voices get raised? Yes. Do things get tough and difficult? Yes. So to paint a picture of how things should be, and I put that in quotes, um, is not where we are at in a district, an autism center who have violated state and federal laws in so many ways I can't count anymore, not providing FAPE, and continues to show a lack of care, compassion, and understanding, all while clearly acting inappropriate, if that's what you want to call it, or being specific, abusive conduct. So I threw it back on her. And that fancy falsification of a word <laughs> um, based on raised voices, not yelling or screaming, frustrations, and all that goes with IEPs naturally due to their sensitivity and nature. All this actually being okay conduct and to be expected as long as there is no attacking of other individuals and people outside of educational information being obtained or cussed at etc, cetera, etc. Cetera. You know, so like, I would expect someone to be angry if someone was cussing at them or, you know, calling them names or, you know, just being really degrading in that way, attacking someone as as a person. Um, that is way different than how I do it. Okay, so when I'm when I say I am attacking, that is when I'm going for the jugular when it comes to educational information. OK, so I am going to that person. So me talking to them on educational things is not a personal situation. I don't give a shit what you did last night. What I care about is what have you done with a student? How has the student made progress? What does your data look like, et cetera, et cetera? All right. And those are the questions. When I attack, it's, it's a quick question. That's what that means. All right. Quick, fast questions. And I expect a good response. And you better be able to back up everything that I'm asking you because I'm asking you specific things regarding either data or the lack of progress or however it is that that child has failed or not done well in or not progressed in or that they said that the child progressed in, but they really didn't. You know, these are the things that I am asking. So when you hear me say, maybe that's a bad word, I guess, but, you know, when I say I'm attacking, that is very quick, very precise, very clear questions that they cannot stand me asking because they're difficult and they throw themselves under the bus when they answer them. All right. And what I mean by that is if I'm asking quick questions and I'm asking them to answer them right away, if you're being honest and transparent with me, you should be able to say it. All right. And if you don't and you're looking at this is what they do. They look at each other like. What do I, what do I say? I mean, literally, that's what they do on my membership. I'm going to be showing you guys these things. It's unreal. And I'm like, because literally I will say, are, are you kidding me? Are you really looking at her to ask her what to say? I mean, it's unreal. Okay. So I'm going to finish this. I'm almost done. Um, I say, um, the school board policies do not override idea. Um, idea states a parent can invite whomever they choose, just as a school district can. Um, under no circumstances can either party dictate to the other um, against the federal law. Um, nice try, though. That's what I said to her. Um, I personally do not care, not do, <laughs> not do I personally abide by school board policies. Okay, I could care less about your school board policies is basically what I'm saying. Because I could. I could care less. All right. If you have a problem with this, then feel free to call Sabrina, I'm not going to say the last name, at the Department of Education. She's a compliance specialist at the DOE for clarification, as she is an attorney, or you can um, or call the contracted attorney for the school. Um, so basically, I'm saying to her, call the state and talk to the attorneys who handle compliance and state complaints and all of that, and I know Sabrina, or call your contracted attorney. All right. So I'm saying if you don't believe me, go call. All right. Because um, I know what I'm saying is accurate. Um, and then I say if someone is cussing and you know, so I go into details on that, um, et cetera. I said, you know, if so I then say this is how teams work. We communicate. 
If there's problems, if there's hostility, then we communicate. We come to the table and we have a powwow on, you know, let's not talk to each other like this, et cetera, et cetera. However, that's never happened or anything like that. But what I'm saying to her is we don't just threaten parents. We we communicate. Let's let's have a conversation. All right. Um, everything can really be solved by communication, at least, you know, if they're transparent. Um, I have never had a special education director be so negligent in their job and duties and show such an enormous lack of professionalism, care, compassion, understanding towards a parent, and more importantly, the student. A student, as you clearly do not reference in this letter, that is making suicide threats, has increased new behaviors, and nothing has been done about it. And so what I'm doing here, guys, is not only have I addressed everything that she said in her letter, which is an always, you literally almost put some of their words back into your letter so it can be referred back of, oh, she's full of shit, you know, because guess what? Raven gave 50 million different reasons why they've been inappropriate, where they gave zero. They used a big fancy word thinking they were going to scare somebody. All right. Um, so I go on and I say, um, you want to comment to a situation you have purposefully removed yourself from, not been a part of, even after being requested to be present and have the audacity to not comment on important stuff. So she had the audacity to comment on that. But not once has she commented on the student being five years behind, the student making suicide threats, the student, you know, not making progress, not meeting the student where she is. You know, all the things that they're doing, never does she reference that. But she wants to use big words to scare somebody. Hell no. I'm not going to allow that. Not happening on my watch. Okay. So um, I move on and I say... Um, I said, if you want to discuss stated goals on working collaboratively and things not being counterproductive, then why don't you actually show you care, do your job, and be present in order to support all parties in coming together for communication to rebuild or simply to be another party who can bring something to the table in the interest of the student. All right. So don't go making blatant statements, stating bullshit and throwing up on people on stuff that's not true, not backing up anything you want to say, not referencing the child or anything about the child and how you failed her. But yet you you haven't even been present. You've been asked to be present. You've been asked to come to the table. You've been asked to do all these things. You failed to do that. But you want to write a letter on one thing regarding the parent and the advocate, but you don't want to comment to any of the other things. And in all honesty, Forget the things about mom and I. Talk about the student. Not one freaking word. Oh, we're really sorry that, you know, she's five years behind. Oh, we're really sorry that, you know, we we don't put the right people in the IEP meetings. Oh, we're really sorry that, you know, she's making suicide thoughts and we're not doing a damn thing about it. Oh, we're really sorry that she's, you know, has increased behaviors and we have not adjusted the IEP or the BIP. Um, oh, we're really, really sorry about all these violations we've done. But you want to have a comment about mom and I, you know, raising our voices. Kiss my butt. Are you out of your mind? You are out of your mind. Literally out of your mind. Okay. And so... I move on and I say um, in bold letters um, after I said, you know, I, I'm we're more than welcome to work collaboratively. We've asked you to come to the table. All right. You want to tell us that we refuse facilitation? Hell no. We're not doing facilitation. We don't need a babysitter. Mediation? Hell no. We'll file for due process and ask for mediation. Sure. But we're not just going to mediation. That ain't happening. So... Then she says, um, or where is it? This is me. Sorry. Um, so basically I'm saying you, we wanted you to come to the table to help even just to be an extra brain, you know, to collaborate and come to the table, you know, cause sometimes bringing another party who hasn't been in the fire, um, can add that calm and say, all right, well, let's look at this and bring something else to the table. She's not given two shits. None. None. Um, and mom said, you know, before I came on board, she ignored her. Um, she's at least responded to my emails, but she, I mean, you just can tell she doesn't care. Um, all right, hold on. Let me sit down. I have to charge my phone, y'all. 
or my computer. Okay, so let me finish this. So in bold, I say you have no right um, to bring your opinions of information your office received to the table. And I'm going to respond to y'all's questions in just a second. Um, to the table, when you have been invited, you have been emailed, um, you have been asked to step into um, support, and you have completely ignored the parent's request and the situation in whole, yet you want to send a letter in intention to accuse and falsify. I mean, just seriously got some nerve. Okay, so I move on and I say, not that you don't care, um, but we have a student, not, oh, I said not that you care, but we have a student here that is five years, so I'm basically what I'm doing now after addressing her letter above and making a statement there, all right? Now I'm moving on to the student, all right? Because I'm not ignoring the student in this letter, all right? So there's a flow to this letter. So I'm kind of talking to you on reading, but there's a flow. I addressed her stuff, called her out on her shit, and now I'm moving on to the student, all right? So I say, not that you care, but we have a student here that is five years behind and has made trivial progress. The student has recently been diagnosed with dyslexia and no recommendations. Now that's a violation. That's why I stated it like that. Um, no recommendations to address this issue that the school district should have been trained and have trained individuals who could have recognized this over a year ago. Put the appropriate learning strategies, accommodations, et cetera, into place in order to address the student's individual needs and impact of disability. New behaviors have presented themselves and no recommendations have been presented. In fact, it was just recently said, we'll watch it. Um, I go on and I say it has been argued for quite some time now about the student's educational gap needs needed to be addressed immediately, all based on data and assessments, multiple assessments to be quite frank. Um, the district and autism center do not want to address this. In fact, they want to keep, um, keep they, what did I say? In fact, they are the ones keeping this case and the child on a merry ground and do not. Now we're at that point where we're going forward with other other means if this next IEP does not pan out. Now, for the most part, now I do want to give you some background here, is for the most part, they have given us everything we want. What they're, what they're fighting us on, and this is very, very common, will I back down on it? Hell no. Do I win? Yep, I sure do. Um, but it is a fight. I will not lie to anybody. I will not tell you it is easy. It is hard as hell. But you don't falter. You know, you go for it with every last bit of energy and oomph that you got. All right. Because this is that part where you're like right there at the top of the hill, you know, right where it's getting ready to go back down. And that's where everybody quits right there. All right. It's been hard, 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 hard. All right. I'm on that little hump. Everybody quits. All right. And or they get letters like this or they get threatened or whatever the case may be. And then that's it. So no one is seeing this, that, that it gets easier. You just have to push through it. Um, and yeah, sometimes you have to have an advocate or someone else come in because, you know, there does come a point where they just like don't listen to parents anymore. But, um, you know, that's just important for you to know. Is there is there a, a, a light at the end of the tunnel? Yes, there is. <laughs> um it has been argued for almost a year now, so clearly based on your actions, so I'm telling her there's a merry ground going on, you know, um, and I said clearly based on your actions, they speak louder than words, um, and you're showing that you don't care about this in any way um, and or about the student. Um, I move on. I'm kind of like skipping now. Um, I go on and I say that um, in the last meeting, our, our, my argument was meeting the student where she is all right um and my exact wording is all right having this is what i said having any student in an algebra class when the student based on multiple assessments benchmarks and data is on the second and third grade level is irresponsible reckless and educationally and mentally harmful the student's behaviors has continuously increased based on data, phone calls, et cetera, 
yet the school district and autism center want to go round and round on serious issues, academics and the gaps, behaviors and more, where there is no proof to back up the words coming out of their mouths, no data or reasoning to back up the ridiculous statements and excuses they come up with on the whim that sadly are almost com comical. And I have told them as much. I've told them literally in IEP meetings, please stop. Please just stop right now. Just don't say anything else because it's absolutely ridiculous what you're saying. All right. So just stop talking if you're going to feed me this BS. Just stop. And I 100% say that in IEP meeting because they start rambling. All right. And they try to twist. Oh, well, this is why this isn't working. And all these things to kind of curve you when no. <laughs> The child is five years behind. There's nothing you're going to do to curve me, all right? You're not going to be able to convince me with your words, okay, at this point. I am way too smart for that, so please just stop now. Just stop. And I will 100% say that to him. Please just stop, all right? And so they do, um, but they don't like that because I'm like, just stop, stop, you know, because, and feel free to say that. You know, you know, when they're feeding you crap, don't be blind enough or feel like you're going to embarrass yourself or, you know, feel uncomfortable doing it, et cetera. No, stop them. Let you want to let them know when you catch them on their stuff. They need to know that you're now catching these things. Okay. So. I move on and I say, um, all of this has led us to believe the education and knowledge of the individuals, including the teachers, the contradictions of the math teacher and reading teacher that went on. Can you hear Jake snoring? <laughs> um, Jake, you're snoring. Everybody can hear you. They can hear you snoring. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, what I was saying is, okay, so the math teacher and reading teacher that went on maternity leave and, and the end of last year and the lies that they could not recoup with made up additional lies. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, yeah. So I said, um, I do not care about degrees. Degrees mean nothing to me. Experience and action mean everything. I said, you can have a doctor, nurse, teacher, business professional, whomever, completely suck at their job. Okay. So think about a doctor. They have all the education in the world. I don't care. I really don't. And the thing is, is they may have the knowledge, the book knowledge, but that doesn't make them good at what they do. All right. So we need to really be mindful of that because they, oh, they're qualified because they got this degree. I don't care if they don't have, you know, a exper experience in dyslexia and they don't have experience with someone. And that's the thing is the most qualified individual, they say, and per idea, it is a licensed teacher. Okay. So the qualified license, et cetera. However, all right. If a teacher who is licensed has no experience in working with students with dyslexia or has no experience in working with a student with severe behavior problems, put them together, they don't have experience or they don't have experience with a child with autism and ADHD and ODD, then they are not highly qualified to teach this child. I don't care what kind of license they have. Okay, so idea leaves it open and leaves it broad. There's some things on idea that do need to change, like, you know, where it says, you know, a reasonable amount of time, things like that, you know, like the um, like something like that, where it says they have to be a licensed teacher, which, you know, there's nothing against licensed teachers. Most licensed teachers are very qualified. However, licensed teachers will tell you, no, I don't have any experience with dyslexia or no, I don't have experience working with special needs children who have you know, behavior problems and so on and so forth, you know? So it's like, you could have a teacher that's perfectly qualified to teach dyslexia and children with dyslexia, but now you trump that with autism, ODD, ADHD, and behavior issues. If that teacher doesn't have experience with that, it doesn't matter if she has experience in dyslexia because it ain't going to work for that child. It's not going to work. They have to have both. And if they can't find that within their school district, they must 
hire out. That is how it has to be. That is what is required. And they cannot argue that. So that's what I mean about this merry ground. I'm done with the BS and they know it and they know they're at their, they're, they're at their, you know, the end of my rope. And so now they're, they're like attacking is what, what it is that they're doing. Okay. Because once I said that they need to, cause, okay, here's the thing. <laughs> if you tell a school district, this is what I said. If you tell a school district, you, and to about a private school that they pay. Okay. They don't know. And then you're, you have something to back it up on while well, the assistant director admitted that there was a violation of who was at the IEP meeting because what was on the meeting notice and who was on the meeting notice. And then the director of this private school went on to say, oh, you know, that's not true. They don't have to be there. They're just invited. Okay. These are the times where it takes everything I have. And no, guys, I have never said this in a meeting, but I'm going to tell you, this is how I truly feel. How I truly feel is I want to say, are you a freaking idiot? Okay. Because even though it says these are the people that have been invited, if you put the damn people on the meeting notice, they have to be there. If you don't know that, go read idea because there is a problem here. You should not be a director if you don't know idea. And if you don't know idea or what should be on a meeting notice, we have a problem. Okay. So I'm sitting there teaching her saying, okay. I understand that it says invited, but here's the thing is there's no other area on this meeting notice that says, okay, these are the people that are invited. These are the people that are mandated to come. Okay. Because service providers don't have to come to an IEP meeting. However, if they are on that damn meeting notice, they have to be there. Okay. It's not, oh, we invited them and they get to choose. No. If they're on that paper, they better have their butts there. Okay. And if they don't, then they better email the parent and myself 24 hours in advance and say, is it okay that I not come? I'm sick today or whatever. And I would say, when we would, mom and I would talk and we would say, sure, no problem. Or we would say to the whole team, we need to reschedule because we really need that person there. All right. Now, am I unreasonable when it comes to stuff like that? If they actually respect us enough to email and say, hey, you know, I'm sick or my child this or whatever. Of course, you know, no problem, because I want them to do that same thing for, for me, you know, if something happened to my daughter or the parent, you know, we want to have that that respect across the board. But if you're not going to have that respect towards us, don't expect us to have that towards you. You know, it goes both ways. All right. You can't play games and then expect things in return. You can't be disrespectful and expect respect in return. Life does not work that way. And, you know, that's what they expect. They think that they can do this, that, and the other, you know, give you documents last minute or all these things that they do that are totally screwed up and we just put up with it, but you got to hold them accountable for their end. You have to. If you don't hold them accountable, they're going to keep doing it, okay? So you have to hold them accountable. Don't be afraid to hold them accountable. All right, because once you start holding them accountable enough times, right, Aaron, right, Bill, right, Kim, once you start holding them accountable enough times, guess what? They start complying. They start complying. It's just this poof miracle shit that happens. All right. And but guess what? You got to call them out, call them out, call them out, call them out, call them out and not back down. No, I ain't playing with you. I am done playing with you. This is about a child. I'm not playing games with you. All right. And that's how people got to get. And, you know, this isn't this. God, this isn't, you know, I've been listening to a, one of my um, fellow advocates that I actually do respect. Um, she's in a due process right now for uh, on a student. And um, I can't make comments right now because I haven't finished up and all that. But, you know, bottom line is a rough case. I wouldn't want to do that shit. I mean, it's a mess. And, you know, the thing is, is you can't. You can't tolerate that stuff and allow them to get away with it. You know what I mean? You People have to own their mistakes, you know? And while a lot of us, at least, even me, you know, when I was going through my stuff, um, we, we want them to like, oh, I screwed up and messed up with your child. They're not making pro You're not going to hear that ever, okay? Leo, Leo, you're not going to hear that ever, ever. Okay, what you will see, okay, their way of making it right 
is doing what they need to be doing. Okay, perfect. That's all I want. I don't need an apology from you. I don't care if I have an apology from you. All I care about is that you serve this child. I don't care about nothing else. You don't have to apologize. You don't have to say, you know, we screwed up. She's five years behind. Don't tell me anything. Just do what you need to do. That's it. All right. Um, because, you know, I have in, you know, in my state and in multiple states, I have attorneys that I work with other than the states that I work in that I actually can go to due process. Like in Florida and in Texas, I have letters from judges where they deem you what's called a qualified advocate. Like they'll actually even sometimes call you, which, you know, one of them did. Um, and they randomly ask you questions on idea and on their state law to see if you're proficient and how you would respond. And then if you're drawing up a motion, you know, how you would go about doing that. And, you know, they will ask, oh, well, can you tell me what's a production of documents and what's this and what's that? And in this situation, what is it that you would do? And what is the terminology? And I mean, I got asked so many questions. I was like, you know, but I knew the answers, but I was just like, you know, you're intimidated when you have a judge freaking calling you and, you know, then you hop on a Zoom and you're like face to face and you're just like put on the spot with this judge and you're just like, oh, dear God. But um, anyway, the states that I can just go straight to due process, you know, I always will I'll request due process and I've always settled in mediation. Um, there's been, you know, like I've said to you guys in the past, there's been three cases that have had to go and be turned over to an attorney. And 100% will I do that if that is beyond my scope of ability, if you will. Um, I wouldn't say I can't do it. I would just say I don't want to do it. <laughs> um, and, you know, it, an attorney does need to take it over at, at that point. But three in, in, in 16 years, not too bad, right? Um, but bottom line, this district is not, they're not getting away with it. All right. So I finish up the letter. I'm not going to read the rest of y'all because there's so much here, guys. But basically what I'm doing is I then state what the child needs. So what I'm doing is I'm going through the child's on a second and third grade level and reading math, this, 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 and this, this is what happened. So then I say, I, I specific, Leo, in this one paragraph, I, I'm very specific about the student. All right. And I say, the gap remains to be five years long. After we have attempted in working with you, even agreeing to do things their way, um, for example, during ESY, we did things their way, direct one-to-one -one instruction with uh, a teacher um, for ESY. And I even said here, I said, and that is at least the time where the student made trivial progress. But, you know, six weeks or whatever isn't enough, you know? And so I said, obviously, a couple times a week for a limited time is not sufficient, and it stops. Um, and then it stops was not appropriate. But we have their proposal. We had their proposal, and we tried it just to say that we tried it, you know? And they never worked with us equally, you know, trying different things. And sometimes it's a puzzle. Sometimes we got to figure it out, you know? And we did that with them, and then they didn't want to do that with us. Um and they never worked with us equally is basically what I'm saying. And then I said, we will not back off. So I suggest you step up to the plate and deal with this as a responsible, decent human being on top of the fact that it's your job as the director of special education. I said, you're not paid six figures to sit back and do nothing but write falsified official letters and to act bigger than someone else. Oh, yeah, I said that. Um, your actions have proved and shown the exact opposite. Um, Direct one-to-one -one specially designed instruction is what the student needs in math and reading based on data, assessments, and her five-year gap, according to experts, along with aligning with the science of reading. The student needs to be um, to receive specially designed instruction one-to-one -one with a qualified and adequate staff member who has experience and training in autism, severe behaviors, dyslexia, anxiety, and ADHD. Um, and this is essential and necessary in order for the IEP to be adequate and appropriate um, and individualized. If you do not have this person, it is your job to find this person and provide the person um, or give other avenues um, the district um, will suggest and be um, okay to. In addition, an appropriate dyslexia um, support must be put in place immediately. A multi-sensory learning approach needs to be 
put in place immediately and an updated behavior plan needs to be put in place immediately. Based on recordings, data, and past teacher recordings. Um, so when I say past teacher recordings, <laughs> um, a teacher that taught her last year called me because she was leaving and she was going to um, move um, to Georgia. And um, she called me and I recorded it. And she proceeded to tell me that um, she failed the child um, and that she was really sorry and that she knew that I was the advocate and that, you know, she wanted, she was feeling uncomfortable and that she was basically, she was saying that she couldn't live with it, you know, like um, she, she wanted to tell me the truth. And um, I respected that. And she said, you know, I didn't, I want you to know, I didn't understand the goals. You got, you were really hard on me in the IEP meeting. And so that's what made me think. And, you know, I didn't answer appropriately. And I wanted you to know that I was not familiar with these goals. I didn't make these goals. They were made the year before and I didn't understand them at all. And I said, well, you doing that, you know, made the IEP not be, not be followed with fidelity. So the whole year she had these goals that you weren't following because you didn't understand them when you should have just come to the table and said, hey, I don't understand these goals. Can we rewrite them so that they're more clear, et cetera, et cetera, especially after you had worked with her for a period of time. But instead, now you're calling me, which I totally respect. This is what I'm telling her. Um, and I appreciate you doing that, but it's a little bit frustrating as an advocate that, you know, I have a teacher coming to me saying, I didn't understand the goals. I didn't come to the table and try to change them. And so I sat on goals for a student who made no progress and because I didn't know how to do them. That That's what she said. And she said that, you know, she, she called me another time too. And she was like, I'm really sorry. And, you know, she said, um, she, I asked her, you know, and the second time she called, I said, can I ask you a question? She said, yes. And I said, were you ever told to not talk in the IEP meeting? She said, yes. Um, and that that came from not her administration. It actually came from the school administration. So like, you got to remember there's two schools. There's the district school that the child is actually enrolled in, but the private school that the child is actually at. Okay. And, um, so, you know, that's what I'm saying here when I say, from, you know, the teacher. Um, so I go into detail of everything that the child needs. And then I even gave an example. I said, for example, I have a school district who does not have service providers to handle the number of students they have who need speech. So in order to serve the students, the school district offered all the parents that, you know, the children that they couldn't serve um, they offered to pay for licensed speech therapists wherever the parents wanted to go. Now, is that an inconvenience for parents? Would it be an inconvenience for you, for me, you know, to take our kids, get down, Rocco, get down. Um, would it be an inconvenience for us to have to take our kids outside of school to speech? Yes. But will we do it? Yeah. And, you know, if the school district is saying, hey, we don't have the people, then their way of working with us is saying, hey, we'll pay for it. Go wherever you want to go. That is them doing their job. That That is because, you know, in this day and time, they can't like just snap their fingers and people appear. But it's the school district's job to offer other options in order to keep continuing to serve the student. So this school district actually did a good thing. Now, obviously, when they get speech therapists and so forth, then that would stop. But I'm trying to give this director an example of her stupidity that she should be doing. You know, this is something that she should already be doing, but I'm giving her an example. Um, and believe it or not, it's actually a, I call it a sister um, district, meaning it's a district right down the street, you know? <laughs> um, so um, I kind of sum it up with saying, you know, um, I did want to address with you because I, I called the other director out from the school that the students actually at the one that I said needed training. Um, I said to address your last statement of the school based team continues to work um, and reestablish our working relationship as Aaron's um, success is our focus is not true and clear by your actions. However, 
you're entitled to your opinion based on no data or facts and definitely with no understanding and care to this delicate situation. Um, and then I address her, her statements on mediation and facilitation. So basically when I write an email, all right, or I'm responding to a formal letter, I am very, very clear. All right. So if I say something, I've got many things to back it up. All right. Their, their formal letter, what? Stated one thing. Oh, abusive behavior. But you don't describe shit. Not a, not a thing. You're, you're doing abusive behavior. Hey, you. You over there. Aaron, you're doing abusive behavior. Okay. You saying yes, that was abusive to me. Stop doing that. Okay. That's abusive behavior. All right. You can't just say, oh, that's abusive behavior. People are looking around like, what? What? You can't do that. All right. You've got to, <laughs> you have got to make a statement and back it up. All right. I never make a statement, and not back it up. I mean, shoot, they just give it to you guys. <laughs> I mean, they just place it on my lap. I mean, I, this is this is the student's file. You want to see it? Holy shit. This is the student's file. It's all online, too. I have them all in Google Drive. But, yeah, this is the student's file. Um, it's insane. It's insane. Mm. <sighs> but I still love what I do. Um, all right, let me go through some of these questions. So feel free to comment. You're not going to hurt my feelings. I'm fine with it, okay? Um, but I just want you to see the frustrations. But I also, in, in, in doing this, is me trying to help you in, in trying to, um, hey, Kate, is that you, like, on Facebook and YouTube? I just want to make sure same person. There's a Kate Atkinson on YouTube, and then there, there's another one on Facebook. So I don't know the same person. But, um. So I just want you guys to see that, you know, when I responded to her, not only did I respond to and hit every single one of her points, which she didn't have any points, but I hit every single thing that she noted. And guess what? I backed it up. Backed it up. Okay. Everything that I said. And then gave detail. Hey, Sky. Then I gave detail as to everything that they did, how they did it, how they made statements, the violations they did, and everything. Yes, ma'am. Mm -hmm. Do you have a good day at school? Yes. What about OT? You did? Did you go to OT? You did? Yes. How fast? Like that. Like that, she said like that. <laughs> I wrote, I write nice and neat. Okay. What did you have to write? I, I wrote the, 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 I, today, today I, I would take the gray horse of the great black polka dots. Oh. Did she show you the pictures that I sent her? Yes. What did I send her? No. She didn't show you? Yes. What? She did last Tuesday. Oh, what did she show you? She showed me the Runset Festival. Oh, so she showed you? Yeah. Okay. Good. Let's put it tomorrow night. It's in the oven. It's probably done. Shepherd's pie. But let's put it tomorrow night on Friday night. Tomorrow? Yes. Probably burgers. Are you excited? Am I excited about burgers? Yes. Sure. I'm excited too. You are? Can I have ice cream tomorrow night? Yes, you can have ice cream tomorrow night. All right, can I finish? Yeah. All right, cool. Thank you. All right. She said thank you. <laughs> All right, unload your backpack, okay? Yeah. All right. Thanks for telling me about that. All right. Okay, so let me start answering questions. Mm -hmm. All right, so I'm going to say hi to everybody. So Kate, um, she is in Texas. Aaron and BB. Hey, BB, how are you? Um, Aaron, don't throw a bone. Okay, I gotta, I gotta play y'all Aaron's video. I don't know what the hell she just sent me, y'all. I know it's me probably running my mouth, but um, 
Should I play it? All right, let me. Um, I don't like playing stuff I haven't listened to first. Oh my God, what the hell am I saying here? Oh shit. All right, hold on. Aaron, I um, was an advocate for her son, Justin. And um, she's in um, a small area in California. And California has 50 freaking million different, they don't call them districts, but whatever. Um, so they have different areas and um, within California, it's like the largest, you know, you, the um, LA is the, um, the largest. And then, and then there's, well, there's New York City, um, LA, and then Houston. So I, I've done New York City, never again. I will do New York, but I will never do New York City again. Um LA I'll definitely do again and then Houston I work with all the time. So um you know Aaron's um situation started off really rough um for no apparent reason. I sent my email which my first emails they are literally hi how are you? This is who I am. Then I'm saying um there's certain things that we're requesting here and then I have a full formal FERPA request which is everything in the kitchen sink by the way you guys get that for free on my membership. And um and 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 real quick um <laughs> cuz I know she's going to ask me Kim it's Monday okay we had to put it off because I had to upload something um and it messed up and then my back end person had to put it all back and all that stuff. So you guys get a ton of my products for free and everything else you get for 50% off. Okay. So, um, so like, for example, some of my products are $2 and 97 cents, you get it 50% off. Some of it's $9 and 97 cents, you guys get it for 50% off. Um, so you kind of get that perk and that sort of thing. So you get a lot of PDFs and things that you can utilize and like the FERPA request and the first email. The only thing I did to my first email is I made it to where, you know, I took out the, this is who I am. And I just made it about, you know, a parent writing and, but it still has the same things, you know, of how to request, um, an IEP meeting and then stating, um, I look forward to hearing back with you from four, four different dates um, and times in order to work collaboratively and come to a mutual agreeable time and date. Um, and I say, and I look forward to meeting with you in the next 30 days. So that's kind of saying it in a nice way, but I'm saying, y'all know. Um, and then, you know, they have a full formal verbal request and then you know, it is um, going through requesting evaluations. Um, and then the evaluations I go into detail with a little bit on the different evaluations out there. I'm not saying, okay, we want this, 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 and this, but there's certain ones that I do like, um, but it is based on need. So like there's certain assessments that I love, but they, I, it can't be given to a child that's nonverbal. You know what I mean? Um, and then there's certain assessments that I really love, but it can't be given to a student that is, um, their second language is not, um, is their second language is English, not their first language. All right. So there's ones that I can love, but if it's not appropriate for the student, then, so I'm specific. Um, and I'm actually continuing to make, I have 25 new documents um, that I have coming out that are going to go into products. Some of them are going to go into the membership um, so that you all have them for free. So that's, that's something that is going to be something you guys can utilize. Um, you know, for a period of time, it's going to be $20 off what the original price is going to be for the membership. Um, I haven't decided if I'm going to do it for 30 days or what I'm going to do, but you know, people initially get going and then, you know, obviously twice a month you will get me on a zoom. So it won't be like this, like a live where I can't talk to you. Like I like to, I like that human contact. You know what I mean? Like I want to talk to people. So, um, we will be able to communicate. <laughs> Um, on a Zoom. <clears throat> and then also, um, things are going to be planned out come, you know, November. So October is going to be, you know, some trainings. November, things are going to be planned out, you know, even more, um, where we're going to have guest speakers come in. I'm going to have speech therapists come in. I'm going to have attorneys come in. I'm going to have occupational therapists come in. I'm going to have different people come in and talk to you guys. Um, and, you know, 
bring their expertise to the table. Okay. Because guess what? I don't know it all. And I learned so much from all of these people. And so I'm going to be reaching out to a lot of people that I have either listened to for a long period of time that I really respect. You know, I'm really big on, I will not reach out to somebody that I don't think knows their shit, <laughs> you know, like they have to be good, you know, at what they do. Um, and, you know, really, truly care about the children. All right. So like I said, just because you're a speech therapist, just because you're a teacher, just because you're an advocate or anybody, that doesn't mean you care about the children. And that's what's important to me. Um, and that comes across in my mind with your actions and not your degree. And so that's what I look for. And so anybody that comes to the table, I can promise you that um, they will be um, extremely high in my book <laughs> and um, I will have nothing but respect for them and their knowledge. And um, I will not have anybody else. Um, they've got to know their stuff. Okay. I will have parents coming to the table um, who will be able to tell you their stories. You know, because it's always nice, not, you know, nice in the sense of like, you know, we're, we're so glad that you're, you know, fighting for your child, just like we're fighting for our child. I'm so happy for you. Not like that. Um, it'd be other parents who come to the table that's been through things and are still just like myself. We're all going through things um, where you will be able to truly um, learn from one another. And, you know, they will be parents either I've worked with or uh, that and that have learned from me, you know, and have have, you know, really taken some information. I don't have to take it all, but they've taken some information and have results from it. Like I like results. All right. And so, you know, that's going to be important to me. Um, I have a um, psychologist that I like um, that I work with in multiple states. Um, that I truly respect. I'm definitely going to have one of the ones that I have here come on and talk on, you know, the evaluations and the choices of evaluations, because I really want you to hear that. I want you to hear why a psychologist thinks about certain, you know, evaluations for a student, where when I send my kids in my area to this psychologist that I really like and, and totally respect his um, evaluations and the way he writes them and the clarity of them. And there, it leaves me with no question. You know, the questions that I've had off his evaluations are very minimal and he jumps on a call with me just like that. And so, you know, that is the type of evaluation I want. That is the psychologist I want to work with. And so he'll be able to give some and shed some light on what you need to be saying to school districts psychologists. Because one thing you need to know is school district psychologists do not have to have their PhD. All right. So they can just have their master's degree like myself. All right. There's nothing wrong with a master's degree. But I will be honest with you. I personally think if you're going to call yourself a psychologist, because you're not really a psychologist. All right. If you don't have a PhD. All right. It's, it's called something else. I don't, uh, I know there's, they call them school-based psychologists. Um, but then like in their emails at the bottom, it does not say PhD or anything like that. Um, I don't remember what the name is, but they're not psychologists if they have a master's degree. There's nothing wrong with a master's degree. I got a master's degree. Um, but what I'm saying is that they're, they don't have their PhD. And in my mind, when I think of a psychologist, when I think of that type of expert, I want them to have a PhD. That's just me. Okay. When I think of a speech therapist, I don't want a freaking assistant. I want a speech therapist. All right. If I'm, and this is just me guys, you guys can have your, you know, I'm not saying that I've, I've been told by parents that there's some speech therapist. I've never worked with assistants because the school district knows that I, I wouldn't even touch that with a 10 foot pole, but that is not against them. It's just, that's not my thing. I want the person. All right. So if I've had some parents, though, that say, yeah, the um, speech, what is it, the assistants or whatever, so they work under the um, speech therapist or occupational therapist, I've, I've heard fabulous things, you know, from parents where they've been great. 
you know? Um, but many times too, I will say when I have a parent and this isn't all parents, but when I have a parent and so sometimes I have to talk with them and we try to brainstorm of what their true gut feeling is. Um, sometimes I feel like I'm a counselor to parents, um, because I have to help you, some parents brainstorm, do you like the assistant or the teacher or the person who we're talking about or are they good okay so i have to die i gotta pull that apart all right i can't worry myself with if you like them as a person all right that's all fine and good i'm glad you like them as a person that's great all right but that's not my job my job is to make sure they are educating your children, all right? So what do you want? You gotta like think about that, all right? I have a parent that I'm working with right now, our family, and you know, they got so caught up in how they really love the teacher and they really love the staff that works with their child, but they still hired me. What does that tell you? Something's not right. Child's not learning. Child's not progressing. So it's great they have the like factor. It's a good thing they like have the like factor. That's a plus, plus, plus. But let's have the like factor and the educational factor. That you are good at what you do. All right? Not you're trying to be good at what you do, but you are good at what you do. All right? That is not a a um, X on a person. It is a X on you're just not the right fit for my child. That's what that says. It's not you're a bad person. It's not you are, are stupid. It's not you're ignorant. It's not any of those things. It's I really like you. You're a great person, but my child's not being educated. All right. So that becomes a difficult situation for some parents because they don't want to hurt that person's feelings because they really like them, you know? <clears throat> but it's kind of like one of those things where you have parents where, oh, the number ones, I call it one, two, three, all right, and wanting an advocate. Um, the parents who are like, I, I, you know, my child's not learning, you know, that much yet, but, you know, I I don't want to ruffle feathers yet. You know, I just want you to like, you know, go in and figure out why my child's not learning, you know, and, but, but just be nice. Can you be nice? Cause they know how I am. So they're just like, can you just be nice? Can you, you know, I just, mm, I don't want to fight. I just want to, you know, get my child evaluated. And, and I'm just like, I said this one parent and client, I was like, are you done? Let me know when you're done. She just started laughing. And she said, what? And I said, are you really telling me this right now? You call me and you're telling me this right now. I don't, I just don't rub feathers. I, you know, this is, I, I just want to get along. I just, please, you know, just be nice, be nice, be nice. Can you be nice? I said, I'm always nice. What do you mean? I'm always nice. It's them that aren't nice. I just don't put up with their attitude. Long story short, um, I said to her, I said, you're one of two people. You want to get along and you do nothing and go about your way. That's it. Do what you want to do. Or it doesn't matter what happens. You're going to get your child what they need. We're going to try it nice and kind and loving and let's do this together and work together and you know let's collaborate and um you know just give the child everything they need and we're good we're awesome let's just you know every iep is whew, smooth sailing it is i can drink my coffee i can just say oh yeah yeah the child needs it da, 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 and they just give it to them we all know that don't happen Ever, <laughs> ever, shit. 
Um, ever. You know, I always say, put me out of a job. I mean, I really don't want to be put out of a job, but I do want to be put out of a job because if I get put out of a job, that means kids are getting what they need. Okay. So that's it for today. All right. So if you want to get off, hop off. I'm going to answer some questions. And Aaron wants me to play this video. Dear God, I don't know what it is. Oh, shit. Aaron, I swear to God, you better, how long is it? Oh, shit. Here we go, guys. How long is it? Um, hold Here on it is, y'all. What do you mean, the agenda? This is me at Aaron's meeting. Uh, the things that we're going to discuss, there are reports. Um, you'll get to see it. Hold on. Well, I, I guess what I'm saying is, like, I don't really care what it says. Um, you're welcome to uh, tell me about it, but you can't um, have okay. an agenda unless you shared it in advance so the parent can participate in creating the agenda uh -huh. as an equal team member. So basically, if we're going to have an agenda, that should have been sent in advance so that my... Oh, I pressed stop. Hold on. Sorry. It's not playing. What happened, Aaron? Um, hold on a second. What do you mean the agenda? Hold on. Let me slide it again so the parent can participate in oh, that's all it was. creating the agenda uh -huh. as an equal team member so basically if we're gonna have an agenda that should have been sent in advance so that my okay so that's all you sent Aaron okay I thought it was longer okay so um <laughs> yeah that was me um so yeah that was just me not at all was that it Aaron Okay. Um, so that was me. Um, cause I don't do agendas. All right. So I will shut that shit down in a heartbeat. All right. So if you want to tell me, call it something else. I think it's just the word that just pisses me off. Okay. Yeah. Short and sweet. Do you have the one with the attorney where the attorney left the meeting? <laughs> cause I told him, no, I don't cuss. No, uh, I don't need to cuss. Nope, I don't, my mouth is big enough that I don't need to cuss. I'm, see, I'm nice. See, I'm nice, y'all. I am nice. I'm just very, you know, I'm assertive. You know, that would be a good word. Um, I'm just to the point. You know, you want to introduce a, a agenda to me? You're more than welcome to email me before that IEP meeting three days in advance. And you can say, hey, Miss Woods, this is what we're, you know, we're thinking of of having the discussion about and, you know, in this order, does that work for you and mom or dad? And, you know, how does, you know, how does that look to you? And do you have anything to add to it? And, you know, that sort of thing. And if there's certain things, firm, direct, and to the point, yeah. And um, if there's certain things that, you know, um, I want to add to it, like, because I've had some teams do that and I thank them for it because I appreciate that. And, you know, because it shows that, hey, you know, you may not like me, but I'm going to show you some respect. And I do the same in return. And um, and so sometimes I have to teach school districts respect. <laughs> I mean, me of all people, teaching them respect. You know, you know, this is how you do it. OK, we don't have to like each other. We don't have to be friends. We're, we're not friends. But what you definitely have to have is respect for the parent. All right. You don't want to respect me. Fine. No sweat off my back. But you will have respect for the parent. That's what you will do. Um, and so, you know, it's just a matter of like teaching them how things should be. And usually they realize that it's not Raven's way. It's the right way. And what you're supposed to do as a human being when you are working together and, you know, uh, hopefully um, wanting what's in the interest of the student um, and not about your selfish self. <laughs> That's my hope. Um that short bite of a video clearly is not enough data to prove you're a nice. Thanks, Bill. Thanks. Thanks. Uh-huh. Why don't you clip one of yours? Do that. I'm nice. Oh, God. He's going to go clip one for real. He's really going to do it. He will really do it. Mm. Uh, go clip one of yours, Bill. Go find something really good. Um, I have to write a California school district. 
Let me tell you about the school district. I'm going to name I'm starting to name school districts now because I'm done. I'm done. Okay. This is Corona Norco. No. Corona Norco Selpa. I don't know what this Selpa thing is in California. I do know what it is, but it's just weird. Um, no other freaking state has this, but California has this Selpa thing. Um, but anyway, this Corona Norco school district, they have a piece of damn work. And they have a Selpa within their own. Like Erin, she had a her Selpa person. Basically what they are is they're kind of like the administration above the school's administration. Okay, that's just, it's a California thing. California is weird, just like New York. So just think about, we have 50 states. Two of those states are really weird. And those two states are New York and California. Okay? All right. Hawaii is awesome. Um, so welcome. So yes, post a one below if it's your first through third time catching me live. Two below if you're an oldie but goodie. If you're catching the replay, this is an hour and a half. Oh my God, go listen to it in spurts or while you're making dinner, okay? Because I don't expect you to listen to it in a whole hour and a half at one time. Um, But hopefully you guys got a lot out today. I know, you know, it's a long one. But, you know, I wanted you guys to see, you know, every once in a while. And this is stuff that I'm going to do. I'm going to be redacting certain things. So you'll see, like, letters from school districts. You know, you'll see certain things that, you know, you're going to come across, you know. And I want you to know how to approach them. All right. And I want you to know how to appropriately approach them so that, you know, you you flow it. <laughs> I call you flow it. Um, and, you know, you hit all those points that you need to hit. And you don't do what I did, you know, back in the day where I would write 50 million emails because I was grammatically correcting them because I was so emotionally responding in so many ways that I had to go and correct it and say, oh, sorry, blah, blah, blah. And then I'd add stuff. I mean, I felt like a fool. So I don't want you guys to have to do that. Um, so that's why I, you know, did that for you to, you know, and I'll do that for you in trainings, um, so that you can ask really deep in depth questions, um, in the, the membership, um, if you're going to be present, um, this is one thing I will be doing is, um, NDAs will be required, um, for meetings that have certain information regarding even though the parent has approved it um it's going to be um one of those things where i don't care if the parent approved it all right i want an nda on that so that you are nobody gives this information about a child um or a family or whatever if a parent's having you know the guts to come out and say hey this is my stuff this is what's going on you know in order to educate and help people i want to make sure that things are covered and things are very um, kind of, you know, dot your, you know, crush T's, dot your eyes because it's personal information. And, you know, I want parents to feel protected um, in regards to their information um, and all of that. So um, that's not going to be every obviously training, but when those trainings happen, you know, for those things are going to go out. Um, and so we want you to still participate. Obviously. Um, so if you have any questions, let me know and, um, post below if you have any questions. Um, oh, thanks, Bill. No, I'm not always nice, but thank you. <laughs> um, firm direction point. Yes. Um, yeah, I've never cussed in an IEP meeting, um, at someone. Now I've said stuff like, oh, that's bullshit. I've said that before. Um, I was really mad at that point. Um, but I've never, I mean, I could probably count that on one hand in 15 years. Um, but I, um, you know how I got loud earlier when I was reading the letter and stuff like that, that I will get loud like that in an IEP meeting especially if they're bullshitting me um because i don't have tolerance but none zero like zero like minus 50 a hundred a thousand like literally i have no tolerance if i if i catch them at all 
on any type of bullshit. That's it, you know? And I call them out in a heartbeat. If you're going to sit and, okay, here's the thing too. All right, I know I'm going on. Maybe I should shut this down and then start it again. That's what I'm going to do. I'm going to shut this down. This training's done. I'm going to pop my back on and I'm going to just give some, you know, IEP 411. Okay? I'll be right back.